Hi everyone, I'm Dakota. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use the QuickTime player to record both ends of a Skype conversation, including audio. For this demonstration, I've set up a Skype call between my desktop and my laptop computers uh, that is active right now. I'm sitting at my desktop here, and I'm going to show you how, this, uh, how the settings work that I'm using, and uh, then I'll walk into the other room and you'll hear the audio that's being recorded in the other room on my laptop. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to show you the settings using an audio recording, uh, but the same applies to a video. I just can't show you that now because I'm actually using those settings to record this video. Um, uh, the first thing to do before we get started is to go and download Soundflower, and there's a link in the video description uh, that you can use to download it. And you'll want to go through the installation process by opening up the DMG file it'll look like that and then following the instructions um, you may get a warning let me actually walk you through this before because you might end up running into this warning so I want to make sure you're prepared for it okay so we're gonna paste that link in and then it'll download the file for us and then double click on it and it'll mount the disk image for us and then when we try to open this package we're going to get this warning here and you can just hit OK and you're going to want to go to system preferences and then open security and privacy and you'll see here that it was blocking Soundflower from opening and you just click open anyway and then it'll take you through the steps to install it uh, it's pretty simple but I'm not going to do it now because I tried to do this before and it screwed up my recording um, because I already have it installed. So just go through that and that'll be fine. Okay, and then once you have it installed, you're going to open up an application called Audio MIDI Setup. So let's do that. And that's Spotlight, just Command Spacebar. It's a nice trick. Um, seems to be open but I don't see anything which is a little bit odd okay all right um, okay so I don't know why that happened but it's if that does happen to you just go to window and then open the audio devices here so what you need to do is you need to set up an aggregate device uh, I'm using a duet right now which is an audio interface that I plug a microphone into and then I plug the interface into the computer. Uh, it's a little higher sound quality than using a built-in microphone, uh, but if you just want to do that, that's fine. So in this case, or in that case rather, you would just click built-in mic uh, for your input device, and the way you create an aggregate device is you go down here and you uh, click here. And again, you're gonna need this one, so after you've done the aggregate device for there, you wanna create a multi-output device, and that will create this one. Uh, and in there, you want to select uh, your audio, audio interface, if you're using one, and Soundflower. Uh, if not, if, it's, if you're using an internal mic and headphones, then you should use uh, the built-in output and Soundflower. You might have lost a little audio when I did that. But, um, so you want to select built-in audio and Soundflower. And then after you've done that, want to make sure you want to right-click on the aggregate device and make sure you're using this device for sound input and you'll see the microphone there if it's if that's working properly and then similarly for the multi output you want to make sure you're using this device for output and then make sure that you've got the the speakers some the little icon there and that's how you make sure you've got your devices configured and basically what this means is that the input it's going to take soundflower input which takes input from like basically sound from your system and then your built-in microphone or your duet which is your microphone that's in the room that's you're talking and combines them into one source that you can use together and then the same thing for the output so basically it's taking output of system audio and output um, of your audio interface or built-in which will make sure like if you didn't have like if I deselect this then I'm not able to hear myself, um, but you should still be able to hear me. So the issue with that is built-in output, you want to be able to hear yourself also. 
Okay. And then next step is within Skype, you're going to want to open your preferences. And then again, make sure your microphone is either your built-in microphone or, um, in my case, the audio interface. And then you want speakers to be set to your multi-output device that you created. And what that's going to do is going to route all of um, that output to both Soundflower and your audio interface where you're hearing or your output, your headphones, basically. Okay, so you've got those two uh, things going. And then the last step is within QuickTime. So when you open QuickTime and you make a new audio recording, like you can see as I'm talking there that I'm getting some audio going in. You want to make sure that you have your aggregate device selected so it's going to be recording from Soundflower and your microphone. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start an audio recording here. I'm in the bedroom and now I'm going to walk in the other room. You should see me come into frame over here and you should be able to hear me when I talk. So here I go. Hi everyone, I'm in the living room now and you should still be able to hear me. Uh, yeah, I'll be back in the other room. Okay. Stop that and then just test Start with the an audio recording sure. here. I'm in the bedroom and now I'm going to walk into the other room. You should see me come into frame over here and you should be able to hear me when I talk. So here I go. Okay, I'm not going to come into frame this time, but. Hi everyone, I'm in the living room now and you should still be able to hear me. Uh, yeah, I'll be back in the other room. It worked. Okay, so that took me a long time to figure out how to get that to work. So I'm, I'm hoping that was helpful to you. This is going to be really helpful for me, for me when I start uh, doing interviews for my podcast. So um, this is a great way to be able to record uh, conversations with your guests. All right, and you don't have to pay for software. You can just do it like that. Um, I do recommend that your guests have uh, headphones, and ideally. Um, some kind of a like some kind of an external microphone because as you can hear there's a lot of noise and that's actually mostly coming from the fact that there is a um, there the fan for the laptop microphone is very close to the internal microphone there so you're hearing a lot of that sound um, and you wouldn't be hearing nearly as much if you had some kind of a like a Bluetooth microphone or something that they were able to use uh, to keep those uh, noise levels down. So anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay,